Today we'll be exploring two different strategies for Amalia Benavides Aguirre by just changing a handful of cards between two different deck lists and completely transforming our gameplay experience. But firstly, if we can just keep Amalia away from that big red button, don't press that button. Amalia, don't press that button. Amalia, don't press that button! <laughs> Amalia Benavides Aguirre is a legendary creature 2-2 vampire scout with ward pay 3 life. Whenever you gain life, Amalia Benavides Aguirre explores, then destroy all other creatures if its power is exactly 20. To have this creature explore, reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land, otherwise put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, then put the card back or put it into your graveyard. Amalia is a powerhouse who's aggressively costed so we can get our game plan started early and this library manipulation mechanic she has is unique amongst Orzov commanders. Plus, getting Amelia's power to 20 and wiping the board is the most wonderful tension filmed meme. It's giving me big Bilbo birthday celebrant energy. One part of the card is a value engine, the other part is magical Christmas land. Is it something we'll aim for in this build? Absa Bloomin Lootly. This is MTG Specs after all. One of the strategies that we're going to look at today is a get Amelia to 20 life, wipe the board and swing in for 20 commander damage. And that 20 commander damage, oh, I love that it gets to 20 instead of 21, which is genius magic design because once you've got it to 20, it's a case of can I get it to 21? Can I gain that last piece of life? Can I trigger explore? Will that top card of my library be a non land card? It's the most unique will she won't she kind of gameplay I am here for. And if we can't get her there, we can get her big enough so that we can complete the job in a few swings. Second build shares lots of strategies, one of my other decks, Anakthea, Hand of Erebos is mostly mono black enchantments where we gain tons of life and then we go on a spending spree with it. Because everybody, as we know, life is a resource and we're going to spend it on drawing loads of cards, creating loads of tokens and a down payment, an investment, if you will, in the complete and total destruction of our opponents. Hatred, I'm looking at you. Onwards to the decks, both of these decks share about the same 90% cards, but then there is a fork in the road, their final 10%, which completely changes their win cons. The life gain aspect of both is powered by the Soul Sisters that gain life when creatures enter the battlefield and Aristocrat Staples that gain us life when creatures leave the battlefield or die. In multiples, the coming and going of low costy creatures triggers Amalia to explore multiple times a turn, letting us churn through our deck. Alas, what happens when Amalia explores away the small utility creatures to the graveyard? Well, both decks hope those creatures enjoyed their short stay in the underworld and then bring them back with cards like Command the Dreadhorde because we have the life to spend on such luxuries. Rally the Ancestors, which I'd save for a big game ending blowout and ascend to Avernus. A bunch of creatures entering at the same time as a bunch of Soul Sisters are going to trigger Amalia more times than the Karen whose name was misspelt on her Starbucks cup. And we have many more ways of gaining life, which is many more ways of triggering Amalia's explore. Oh, you cast a multicolor spell, I'll gain one life. Oh, you played a non-basic land, one life please. Oh, you exist, I'll take one life from each of you, cheers. It's getting to the point with this deck that someone breathes and you see the top 10 cards of your deck. And in both decks, death is the gift that keeps on giving. These three clearly run a subreddit about taxidermy and wearing a lot of black and give us sweet, sweet cards with each creature's demise. And this trio turn death into life and subsequently more soul sister triggers when they head to the bin, leaving Eldrazi, vampires and squirrel tokens, oh my, behind. Those Eldrazi, Vampire and Squirrel tokens then stand to be sacked for something else and so the circle of life continues to turn. And how do we encourage, cajole and manage our creatures into our graveyard? We employ a crack squad of sacrifice enablers like Yorgmoth, Braids and a lowly Skullport merchant to draw us cards. I've said this before, although people should, they do not pay the one and they do not sacrifice things to Braids. You will always get your cards. Sack outlets that scry are useful in a deck that is built around revealing the top card of your library to an explore trigger so we can conjure up the aid of Viscera Seer, Woe Strider and Flesh Taker to do just that, while triggering all the sacky goodness and look, Flesh Taker even ekes out another point of life gain. 
And with this constant infusion of life, cards like Marauding Blight Priest and Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose can make our healthy gains into an opponent's malady. This would be the perfect place for the loop the loop two card combo kill I didn't include with Sanguine Bond and Exquisite Blood, but you may include it if you so wish. Finally, among the shared cards in these lists, we've got some removal that synergizes with our themes. Revenge of Ravens for that. Attack me and not only lose life, but watch how many triggers go off. Uh, uh, oh, you're attacking elsewhere. Great choice. Meat Hook Massacre, horribly useful as a minus X, minus X wipe. So we can undercut our growing Amalia and add another way to monetize the grisly demise of creatures. Then, Karlov of the Ghost Council is redundancy from Malia as it grows with life gain, and you'll easily be triggering enough instances of life gain to fully charge up that activated ability, spitting out exiles all over the shop. In decks filled with one and two drop creatures, Convoke gives us solid removal and protection. Lethal scheme is, I believe the kids say OP in these decks, filling the graveyard using Connive, Explore's Drunk Cousin, and pumping the team while handling a creature on the board, and Clever Concealment letting Amalia and the team chill in limbo when the wipes are wiping and keeping those hard-earned counters on our jet-setting commander. But now it's time to diverge. Here comes the Voltron build. It's time to take Amalia and those hard-earned counters and head to the skies. Cultist of the Absolute gives Amalia a big glug of keyword soup. Flying, death touch, ward pay three life, meaning it would cost six life to target Amalia, and a downside, which is a total upside, sacrificing a creature in our upkeep. We love sacking creatures. More like Cultist of the Absolutely Busted, am I right? Moving on. Or perhaps Archangel Elspeth can minus two her loyalty and turn our vampire into a vampire angel. Amalia takes flight and gains two counters. Maybe Elspeth helps trigger the apocalypse here. And those other abilities are looking pretty good. Plus one to create a creature that triggers soul sisters and also has lifelink, too good. Then, with art that has definitely been your desktop wallpaper at some point, don't lie, gift of the Orzova to give our vampire scout flying and lifelink. Then we come to the best addition to this Voltron strategy, Unspeakable Symbol, a mainstay of Marchesa the Black Rose decks. We can pay free life to put a plus one, plus one counter on Amalia. Pay that life we earn to inflate our commander's power, especially good if we've given Amalia lifelink with Gift of the Orzova or this maniac, Heliod Suncrowned, who could not be doing more to make this deck shine. Plus one, plus one counters upon gaining life, giving lifelink out like candy, solid include. Before we depart for our destination number two, the ridiculous pay life deck list, please enjoy this aura and two equipment. Light of Hope, which skips the whole explore bit for Amalia and simply goes, have plus one plus one counters for all the life you've gained. Fire Shrieker that simply bestows double strike and Tarian Soul Cleaver, because creatures do be hitting the yard in this deck. So let's get Amalia in on that action with plus one counters each time it happens. There's a couple of extra bits of protection in that list, also Skrelv and Good Boy Selfless Saviour, which are creatures so we keep triggering creature synergistic life gain, bringing it to nine cards over the seven in the pay life build. People do like smiting Voltron commanders. And if we do take the red pill, we end up with the pay life Amalia build. Many of our opponents will be busy making tinfoil fallout shelters waiting for Amalia's big bang and won't see the hatred or bond of agony coming, especially if you are some unassuming pale geek who would never do something as heinous as paying away your life for these kill spells. Let the intrusive thoughts win. Do it. Interestingly, Hatred also lets us pay life to get Amalia near to her 20 power. Remember her text says she has to gain life, explore and then destroy if at 20 power. So just moving up to 20 power isn't going to trigger the wipe. I'm back and forth on Aoife Flux Reservoir. I usually reserve it for a storm build, but we are able to cast a lot of small things in a turn and getting over 50 life isn't hard. Then follows a trio of cards that find very different routes to creating creatures for us. Plague of Vermin lets us have a life auction with our opponents to create 1-1 rats, and we can bask in the glory of knowing those rats will just trigger our soul sisters and recoup the life spent and give us lots of bodies for the sacking thereof. A couple of soul sisters and we are making back our life twofold, and it's an I win button with so many cards in the deck. Sack multiple bodies, made to viscerous seer, drain the table with Zulaport cutthroat and many other options. 
Tavash Gloom Summoner turns all the life we gain in one turn into a hench flying demon and Phyrexian Processor will put an XX minion token into play where X is the amount of life we paid when it entered the battlefield. A steady stream of 1010s sounds lovely to me. Bonus's Citadel is an obvious fit for the deck. We have ways to scry multiple times to set up the top of our library, lots of life to spend on low cost spells and our weenie horde likes to congregate on the field in large numbers to fuel the tap sack 10 each opponent loses 10 life ability. Finally for when you want all the cards and you've got a life total to burn call 0800 necrologia don't delay call today our operators are standing by you could go for necropotence greed our ghouls blood fast there are loads of ways to turn life into cards in black enjoy finally if you have an archangel of thune lying around you can turn our soul sisters into swole sisters. Life gain has been a feature of decks on the channel previously. We had MTG Spectacular episode two featuring Levitator, Horror Streamer to the Stars, who played Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge, a killer candy life gain deck. And also you might be interested in a sweet curse brew with Eriot of the Charmed Apple, which shares many cards with the Amalia brews I have shared with you. Ors of Sisters, doing it for themselves. What's coming up on the channel? I'm glad you asked. We've got MTG Spectacular episode three coming up featuring Daddy Dinosaur James, who's going up against me, and two people have already featured in our gameplay videos, Toby and Louie. I am playing my favorite deck of the year, Bernard Ginger Sculptor, which has life gain in it. How exciting. James is playing Kalamax Stormsire. Louie is playing Alayla Cunning Checks Computer Conqueror. And uh, we've got Toby on his Kenrif build. It's an amazing game. The theme was Signature Decks High Powered Commander. And at one point I had to step away from the table to work out the combat maths. Very stressful, very exciting game. So subscribe for that content. And oh, is that a bandwagon I see? Yes, it's a bandwagon. Myself and Levitator, the horror streamer who I've just mentioned, are going to be streaming Lethal Company on Thursdays. The game that's taking the internet by Storm, so very much looking forward to getting stuck into that game. Come and watch me fall off a gangplank and levitate to get stung to death by bees. Totally worth the price of admission. In fact, if you've enjoyed this humble free content today, a like and subscribe would mean the world to me. I hope to see you next time. And until then, my name is Lee and this has been MTG Specs.